Today, we are installing the ultimate shed mod. It's required modifications, a lot of planning, and a lot of time. But today, we're gonna show you how we did it at its final form. Yeah, so it's just a matter of who gets to use it first. Yeah, well exactly, and we're gonna decide that by the old trick in the book, the old coin toss. So, uh, Liam, what are you going for? I'll go heads. Well, so you guys that have uh, watched the channel for a while now know that, you know, we've done a fair few things to these cars, and um, we've managed to do them all, you know, sort of in the in the traditional way that most people do. So, you know, we've done things like, we've pulled gearboxes out. Suspension. Completely done suspension, we've done swivel hubs, we've changed engine oil, all the surfaces, and diffs, everything, yeah. all underneath the car. And look, this was fine and it's been alright, but there comes a time in a man's <laughs> life when he has to upgrade. Yeah. So the idea of a hoist has been like, oh, it's always, you know, it's, it's been, always on everyone's It's been floating. Oh, yeah, everyone's always thinking, oh, it'd be great to have a hoist. And we've been thinking that, Everything's trust got me, cars. when that yeah. gearbox was coming out, <laughs> there wasn't a moment that didn't go past where I didn't think, Imagine if we had a hoist, how much easier this would be. Well, like Dad always said, oh yeah, you know, one day we'll have the hoist out there, da da da. And I always just thought, nah, that's never yeah, gonna happen. Gonna happen. That's a pipe dream. Yeah. And now there's a truck coming to our house right now with a special delivery in the back of it. Yeah. So let's go have a look at it. Yeah, let's just see what we've got. So the truck rocked up and inside was our new Molnar hoist. So we're pretty excited. It's four and a half ton universal two post car hoist. Came all nicely boxed up and we were pretty keen to get it unwrapped. All right, so today we're installing the big Molnar hoist into the shed and the first mission we're actually gonna to have to do is cut up the concrete. Now, you might think, why can't we just pop her in and bolt it in. Now, the concrete has to be a special thickness in order to actually meet their specifications and be safe. So, this concrete's only 90 mil thick, um, and they actually recommend 125 mil. So, we're gonna have to cut this up and then redo the concrete with mesh and make sure it's all safe and gonna be strong and secure. So yeah, essentially, um, Dad's marked out all the lines he wants. So, we've basically made it so you're gonna be able to get the hoist in here while still getting in cars on this side. So you can get a car in here, a car in there, and everything can still fit. So it's gonna be awesome to not have to use this big pile of jacks we've had to collect over the years. Put it up on the hoist, so we grout. So we're gonna get cut, cut up the concrete, get ready to pour the slab, and then we can start bolting it all in. So we've got the big demo saw here. I'm gonna be basically just spraying all the dust down so Dad doesn't choke. And then yeah, he's gonna start cutting away on these lines and cutting up our new bit of concrete. Once the concrete was cut, it was time to remove the actual blocks. So to do this, we we're gonna use a tractor, basically drill a hole into the slab, put a bolt in it, and actually use a tractor's force, power, to pull up each square of the slab. Each concrete block weighed around 500 kilos, so they were seriously heavy. And they were quite firm in there, they did not really want to pop out easily, so needed a bit of encouragement, a bit of bashing, but the tractor was able to get them out a little out of the slab. So it would have been just, that's just below their recommended spec. Would the current floor thickness be strong enough? Yeah, it would have been strong enough. Probably would have been. Look, they do say 125 mil recommended, um, and you could probably get away with 100 mil, um, which that was, but I don't know. Peace of mind, Dad wanted to do it. He wanted to be safe about it, so it's all coming up. We continued removing the rest of the blocks using the machine. It was a fairly easy process, and they all just came out fairly easily with a slight amount of bashing. It was also pretty interesting being able to look into the old slab that Dad poured 15 so years ago and see how it was, how it all ended up setting. It wasn't long until Dad had the foundations dug. He dug 200 mils down below the concrete and then undercut it as well. It was so overkill, um, but it meant this hoist would literally be going nowhere. 
So we don't have three phase at home, but that didn't matter. We just got a single phase hoist. So we did all the wiring for the hoist. It's got that in position. And then we moved on to getting the slab all done. We got the mesh put in, um, welded all the mesh. It was a big process just doing the welding and getting the, the slab basically preparations perfect. We also ended up casting the bolts in, which would make it a heap stronger, which you can see here. So we had to make a template from the base of the hoist, basically get all the bolt positions perfect, and then weld in these castings. With this all done, we were ready to pour the slab. All right, so today is concrete day. So we're getting the concrete poured for the slab. So um, we've got the bolts casted in. So that means you can basically bolt them in from the top and drill down, but this is the best way to do it and to make it the strongest. So we've got them casted in into the concrete. Um, we've obviously got a lot of mesh down. Um, it's all welded, it's all ready to go. So we've got a truck coming that's delivering 3.6 uh, cubic meters of Concrete at 40 MPA, um, so that should be here any minute, and then we'll just start pouring and filling up, so it's going to be grouse. So there's always this eerie sort of silence waiting for the concrete truck to arrive. We've had uh, quite a few slabs poured at the shed before, but having one poured for the hoist was ultra exciting, so it's always exciting concrete day. We got the truck, backed it in, set it up for us ready to be poured, and uh, got to work. We wanted the barrel in the level. Southland really well. The concrete was great. We had enough. Everything went to plan. Um, and then we obviously left over stuff, repaired the driveway as you do, which is a kind of tradition for us. Whenever we get extra concrete, we pour it on the driveway. The concrete truck took off and the concrete was smoothed out for a perfect finish. Daniel, it is smooth. It is very smooth. Pretty warm too. This is a chemical reaction. It goes uh, up when it heat, heats. It gets warm. That's good. All right. So concrete finished up last night. So now becomes the waiting process. So used 40 MPA concrete. So for a you know 90 you know 8% cure, whatever it is, uh, 28 days. Within sort of a week, it'll probably be hard enough to where we can start mocking up everything. We're not going to be doing any sort of tensioning of bolts or putting weight on it. Um, but yeah, we did the final few passes over it last night to get it nice and smooth. This is going to be getting painted and we're going to go around the edges with like an epoxy to make it all nice and seamless finish sort of thing. So yeah, now it's just the waiting game. We've got to take, oh, in a few days, we'll be able to take the casting templates off and start cleaning up around all the casting bolts. But yeah. Coming along now, can't wait to get the hoist in and um, yeah, just gotta keep on waiting. Over the next couple of days, we've removed the casting template, started to clean up all of the nuts, get them ready, and then we were eager to get stuck straight into it. So we got the hoist out and started assembling it. It's basically just like a big uh, Lego set really, it's just nuts and bolts, do it all up and yeah, well, watch the process. It was crucial for us to get the level of the posts correct, so we spent a lot of time making sure they're perfectly level and we're going to line up perfectly with each other. And thankfully the template was perfect so the hoist could just easily drop right onto the bolts. Pretty mind blown once it was all set up. Like we've always talked about, maybe one day getting a hoist, but to actually see it there in person was pretty surreal. 
We then pressed on with the install, installing the solenoid locking pins. We did all the hydraulic lines, got the motor all installed, put on the actual arms himself, and then the final touches, and it was really coming together. There was a hoist sitting in our shed. It was, yeah, just unreal. With it full of hydraulic oil, it was a moment of truth. So, as you can see, the hoist is standing in its final form. So, since we poured the slab, it's been 28 days, so the concrete is fully cured. We've been able to torque down all the bolts on the base plates to spec. So, now it's ready to take the weight of a, of a car. And, um, yeah, so it's just a matter of who gets to use it first. Yeah, well, exactly. And we're going to decide that by the old trick in the book, the old coin toss. So, um, Liam, what are you going for? I'll go heads. Heads! Oh, sweet. Oh, up first. Control's going off first. Let's right, do it. Let's set it up. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, so we've got the patrol just sort of lined up um, so that we can access the lifting points. So the thing is with... Um, you can find specifically where the uh, manufacturers recommend to lift the car from if you are using a hoist. When it's on the ground, these arms swing out. Like so, and then it's pretty much just a matter of lining it up. So, uh, and what you can do to make it easier, we'll lift the car up, we'll lift the arms up to just below, and then it's easier to line them up as well. So, control panel, up switch, down switch, pretty simple. And that, so that um, beeping that you can hear there. Is a, see how these, so they, obviously these arms have locking pins and the beeping just tells you that the arms aren't locked into place. So they'll lock into place. Um, and then it's just a matter of lining it up. All right, so happy with where that one's gonna land. All right, we'll go to the other side. That one looks good. All right, so we'll get the wheels off the ground and then we can jump on the back, make sure it's um, not going anywhere. All right, so we've got it just off the ground. So let's try from the front first. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it should be pretty up. Yeah, so obviously the first thing with the hoist, just because you've got the hoist doesn't mean you have to go all the way up. So if you wanted to do something as simple as checking your wheel bearings, this is all the only height you need to go to. Even stuff like swivel hubs would be really easy at this height, although you'd probably do them a tiny bit higher. And then I suppose the next step would be like, yeah, working height for the axles and things, and then right up. So let's just go a bit higher. And you can hear as it go up the uh, as it goes up the locking pins. So they're under these covers, and they fall into the gaps as, it, as the um, hoist goes up. So they're like your safety pins if anything fails. So obviously that's nowhere near the full way up, but this is probably a pretty good height to pull some axles out, do some swivel hubs. Brake pads, easier to do. Also, I forgot to mention, this makes you way more inclined to rotate your tires, because everyone knows how much of a pain of it are. Pain in the ass it is if you've got to jack up each side of the car. Mm -hmm. But you do this, you bring it all up to like there and then you can literally swap them whichever way you want easily. You don't need like three different jacks or two different jacks. So yeah, so uh, we'll keep taking her off and yeah. This should, as you can see, we've still got that much clearance. We'll probably find that the actual, the limit, uh, the top limit for the actual um, hoist itself will top out before the um, like height limit bar at the top. So, but we'll see how we go anyway. Oh, there you go. So that's the limit switch. So I was holding on the switch and it topped out. So that'll be, as you can see, we still haven't hit the, the uh, top out bar, but that'll be the top out uh, for the actual, um, like the rams sort of thing. So, and now we're underneath. 
to high enough for you, Liam? Like, cause yeah, I, I said to Patrick, I can, get, I can adjust I can that put, limit switch a touch higher. I can pretty much walk under the whole you're thing. The one that's, you're the one that governs our maximum. I can, I, oh, it's a little bit. It's not too bad, really. <laughs> touch more, I reckon. How good's the LSD, Patrick? See if you can stuff it. Oh, that is good. <laughs> good missing LSD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. So obviously that's the first thing, the first like the first major thing with this is being able to see leaks easily because you've got all the oh, light that's still. It. it all looks so, pretty good though. Good pup. Mm. Um, like a lot of people put off simple tasks like greasing your unis and and um, drive shafts just because it's such a pain in the ass when you have to do it on the ground and like you can't spin all your tyres a lot of the time and just having a hoist. It allows you to do stuff like that so easily that you know you can keep good maintenance on your car. It really does take like, the hard work out of working on a car. <laughs> All right, so the patrol has had its go. So now it's time to see the Land Cruiser, the, the Poo Land Cruiser. <laughs> so I'll get this off the hoist, and then um, we'll roll the Land Cruiser on in. And. In case any of you, of you are interested, because I thought it was pretty cool when I first did it, you can hear when you hit the down button, if you listen, you'll hear like a knock, and it's actually like a solenoid um, where the locking pins are that retracts them so that it can come down. So it's all pretty, yeah, it's very uh, well thought out, this, this hoist. So let's go down. And it comes down pretty quick too, because it's this got the is, weight of the car. And yeah, this is a single phase hoist. You wouldn't say this is slow at all, would you? Really? No, nah, this is this is as quick as you need hoist is a hoist. Yeah. Because you know, I, I was like, oh, is a single phase going to be like, take five Ages minutes to, to get up? up. But no, nah, it's fast as. It's, it's, it's solid. Alright, we'll take a bit of this. Alright, it's over there. Yeah, if it's holding there, it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, imagine if you had that much, imagine if it's sitting that high. Four inch lift, 35s. This is what we use, Patrick, when next time you do a suspension lift, Photoshop these out, just raise it up to oh, the yeah. right <laughs> And imagine trying to get into your car. Trying to get in the door. Alright, let's put it up. Imagine you trying to do my awning. Uh. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to. Up we go. Testing the uh, Testing LSD. 80 series LSD. So I'm gonna do try stuff it, alright? Yeah, go. <laughs> alright. Not as good as the patrol. <laughs> patrol LSD is better. You can tighten them up. Yeah. Put some yeah. uh, put a shim in it. Point mm. point seven shim or whatever they do. Mm. Yeah, it's just so awesome having this. Like it's just absolute and the, and the light, like you no longer need yeah, to bring a need. light underneath the car. Like this is just like a, like a nice sunny day. Oh, it's perfect. You, it's so much it light is like, here. Yeah. You can spot so everything bright. so much yeah. easier. Like it's just, yeah, it's bloody awesome. That's it. <laughs> Stop when the wheels touch the ground. Yeah, that'll do. So, <laughs> in a couple of weeks time, for instance. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty high up. How much, what do you reckon that is? That would be... I'll say 32 inch tyres, but... Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be like a... 2 to 3 inch. No, nah, that'd be like 4 to 4 or 5. That'd be like 4. Yeah, probably. Alright, so that's the Molnar all installed in the shed. Definitely ultimate shed mod, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, nah, it's, you're probably going to see it in some future videos, obviously. Now we can do everything from home. Like, there's yeah, not it. one there's, job. There's no excuses to exactly really right. to a mechanic unless it's like no. getting your tires balanced. Yeah. 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 Well, that's it. That's, that's what Treadworks is for. No, very true, yes. So nah, I absolutely love it. It just makes life easy. It, it really does. Um, yeah. Obviously, not everyone can afford a hoist. They're one of those things that, if you are a person that works in your four-wheel drive a lot, 
You We've got all four here. Like every single parents car have four Everyone is a four wheel drive. Yeah. And, oh, we have one Falcon sedan, which is still useful for the hoist. Yeah. But yeah. and then obviously I mate, Dan James. That's the thing. You know, you're gonna be using it. Like every you you, you make a lot of friends with a hoist. <laughs> definitely. Um. Definitely. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. hope you install uh, like the transformation video uh, and the insta installation. But yeah. Give it a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.